All right, next we're gonna talk about symbols. So as I mentioned before, there are three different symbol types inside of Animate, and they have uh, different purposes. So I'm just gonna start with a, a new document. And um, the first symbol type that we're gonna take a look at is the graphic symbol. So with graphic symbols, they can be animated, um, and but they have they have a timeline, but that timeline is shared by the main timeline. I know that sounds confusing, but I'll try to show the, you that um, right now. So I'll go ahead and select an ellipse tool. I'm going to change the fill color, and I'll just go ahead and draw an ellipse. So right now this is a stage level object. You see that it's not in a library. Remember that from before. I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I want to make it into a symbol, and um, I can right click on it and choose convert to symbol or hit F8. And I do want to make it into a graphic symbol. So a graphic symbol is set. I'll just call it a circle. And a couple things to notice here. So we have an option to, for registration. Now the registration is going to be important uh, depending on rotation or scaling of the object. And the rotation of the scaling of the object with the, rota with the registration set in the top left hand corner it's going to rotate and scale by that. So I'm going to set this to the middle. So when it rotates or scales, it's going to be by the middle. And then under advanced, there are some advanced options for our action script um, that is available with movie clips. Um, notice that it's not available here. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that item appears inside the library. Notice that the appearance of the item has changed. I have a keyframe. This exists on layer one. Okay. Now, watch up here. So up here, I have this dropdown that tells me that I'm in scene one currently. And what I wanna do is I wanna edit this circle so that I can animate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. And notice that I was in scene one, but now I'm inside the circle animation. So what I'm going to do with this circle is I'm going to go ahead and morph it. I'm going to change its appearance. So I'm going to go ahead and click on frame two and I'm going to hit F6. Now that is going to create a duplicate copy of the circle in a new frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cursor over here and I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. And I'm going to repeat that process. So going to frame three, hit F6, and again, pull this out a little bit more. And then again, frame four, F6. Let's pull this out some more. Now, there's a feature um, that I can turn on it's called onion skinning. And that onion skinning will allow me to see the frame before and the frame after. So if I turn this on, it's kind of hard to see here, but um, you can see it better there, where I can see the shape of the object and how it changes over time. And then the other thing that I have here is this icon, which allows me to insert keyframes. So I'll just literally just have to click on it to insert a keyframe. And I had previously done that. So again, I'm just gonna morph this object again, insert a new the keyframe. Morph it, insert a new keyframe. I'll just do this for 12 frames. And we'll see what we get. That's frame 10. And now frame 12. I'll just turn this off. It's not really being helpful right now. And I'll scrub through this and you can see the animation. So it's gonna grow. Now what if I wanna make it spring back? So it's gone through this transformation phase all the way out here. And now I wanna make it go backwards. Well, I already have the frames that I need. So rather than manipulating this object for another 12 frames, having it move backwards, what I can do is select all these keyframes and I just click and drag across them 
to select them. I'm going to right click, choose copy frames. And then I'm going to click on the frame after this, right click, choose paste frames. Okay, so this growth is happening again at frame 13, but I want it to go the opposite way. So what I can do is select all that, that sequence, all those frames, and I can choose reverse frames. So then it'll go backwards. So if we take a look at the entire animation, um, this circle transforms and then it comes back. Okay. Now if we go, we've done all this inside the graphic symbol. The graphic symbol now has these 24 frames and they're animated. But if we go back to the main timeline by clicking this, you'll see that I don't have enough frames here to show what's happening in the graphic circle. Um, so what I need to do is I need to extend the timeline so that I can see all those frames. So if I click on frame 24 here and hit F5, you'll see that the graphic symbol is now animated because um, it's I have enough room now to see all those frames so I can animate those. I mean, I'm not animating them again. I'm just allowing the animation in the graphic symbol to play through on this main timeline. And that can be moved. I can move this anywhere I want to. I can start in a different location. If I were to extend this, let's say, well, let's go ahead and extend this to frame 50. All right, so it's going to play through and it's going to keep playing. Okay, so well, what's going on there? So let's take a look at the properties. So if I click on this and I go to the properties panel, um, you'll see that there's a looping option. Um, and it's going to a loop right here. This option is play graphics in a loop. Then I have an option to pre graphic once or play a single frame from the graphic. So because the looping is on, it's going to play over and over again. If I go ahead and change that to play once, you'll see what happens here. After frame 24, it just sits there. So those are the, some of the things that you can do with the graphic symbol. We'll get into color effects a little later. Um, so that's a graphic symbol. Now, what a, there's two other symbol types. We have a button symbol and a movie clip symbol. So I'm going to insert new symbol. And this time I'm going to choose a movie clip symbol. And I'll just call this clip one. Okay, so now I'm in a new timeline. Now a movie clip symbol, if you look in the library panel, it has a different icon. And a movie clip is basically, if you think about it this way, it's a container that contains an animation that is independent of the main timeline. So whatever happens in that animation, it doesn't require the frames in the main timeline in order to play it. It's kind of like a self-contained animation. So we'll do a, a simple um, transform animation here. So I'm going to grab this poly tool. And what I want to do is set this to a star and the number of sides. And let's change the color to like a gold. OK. So then I'm going to click and drag to draw this out. OK. Now it's not in the center of the canvas. So right now, this is a movie clip symbol. It's not on the main timeline. And this is the, the anchor of that particular area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to snap it to that particular location. You can also use the align panel to do this. If you have the align panel set to align to stage, I can align it to the center, both horizontally and vertically and then it snaps into that location. All right, so I'm in a movie clip symbol, but even though I'm in a movie clip symbol, in order for me to animate this, this also has to be a symbol. So now we're getting into nesting. So I have a movie clip symbol called clip one, and what I need to do is convert this star into a symbol so that I can animate that. So I'm gonna right click on the star, choose convert to symbol, and this 
is kind of arbitrary. I'm just going to choose graphic and I'm just going to call it star. Okay, so now the star is a symbol. Let's say that I wanted to create a rotation animation on this. So I'm going to go out to frame, um, let's go to frame 36. And I'm going to hit F5 to extend the timeline. Then I'm going to right click anywhere on the timeline and choose Create Motion Tween. Now what that means is that anywhere on the timeline, wherever my playhead is, I can introduce the animation. So what I want to do with this is change its rotation. Um, so at the last frame, so in the transform panel, I'm going to go ahead and type in a value of 180 degrees. And that's going to change the rotation. And then you'll see as I go through the timeline, now I have this rotating star. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the library. So in the library, I have a movie clip called Clip 1, and I have a graphic clip, uh, symbol called star. And on, on the main timeline, I don't have those yet, so what I want to do is create a new layer. And I want to drag the clip into that main timeline. Now when I scrub through the playhead here, you'll see that the movie clip doesn't play. Like I said, it's independent of the main timeline. You'll see that the graphic symbol does play, but the movie clip doesn't play. However, when you test the movie, you can hit Command Return, or you can click this button to test the movie. You'll see that it does play. And it's playing on its own. So even though uh, the graphic symbol, when it stops and starts, right, the star symbol keeps going. Okay. So if, for example, let's say that I remove these frames from the first layer. I'll just right-click on that, choose Remove Frames. Right. So will the star keep playing? And when I test the movie here, you'll see that the star doesn't move at all. And this is what I mean by it's independent of the main timeline. But if I test the movie, the star does play. Okay. So movie clips are very powerful. They also have extra attributes uh, for when it comes to programming in ActionScript and also when it comes to uh, programming with JavaScript. Um, and you'll see in the properties panel, I have color effects. There is also an instance name for movie clips so they can be called on with scripts. Um, there's uh, a few other options here, 3D position and view vanishing point. There's some filters that can be added. So the movie clip is like the highest level object that you can add um, inside of Animate. It has, it has the most attributes. So the last symbol I want to take a look at, and I'll create a new layer here for it, is the button symbol. So because Animate is capable of creating interactive uh, experiences, we need buttons or CTAs or to uh, allow things to happen. So for example, if I go ahead and grab the rectangle tool here, what I'm going to do is on this new layer, I'm going to just draw a rectangle. And let's go ahead and change the color of this. I'll select it. And you can change the color. Okay. And what I need to do is I need to convert this into a symbol again. So this time I'm going to use insert uh, modify, I'm sorry, convert to symbol. And here's the button symbol type. And I'm just going to call this my button. And then click OK. So button symbols have all these properties as well. You can give them instance names just like movie clips to be called in by scripting. And if you double click into a button symbol, you'll see that it has this timeline that's different than the normal timeline. So if I 
go through here, you can't see it now, but this current state is called the up state. Then we have an over state, a down state, and a hit state. Now the hit state governs the area that the button is clickable. The overstate is the appearance of the button when you mouse over the button. The downstate is the appearance of the button when you click on it. So what I'm going to use here is I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to create a keyframe. And now I have this button here. And I'm going to change the fill color. I'm just going to make it uh, a different color, maybe like a darker green. So now if I see, here's the over. Here's the up state. And for the down state, again, add a keyboard shortcut, um, F6. And maybe the down state, it turns to black. Now the hit state doesn't show up. The appearance of the, of the, the appearance of the button doesn't matter in the hit state. The hit state is just defining what is clickable. So if it's identical to the up, over, and down states, then that's, only, that's the only area that's clickable. Um, you can make it larger, or you can make it smaller, or you can make it a different shape than what these other frames represent. But that is defining the area that's clickable. Now in the main timeline, we can't really test the button here. Um, so, if we test the movie, Command Return, you see that I move over my cursor, over um, move my cursor over the button. That's the over state, and if I click, that's the down state. And you'll notice that I don't see my cursor until I'm in the area that's defined by that hit state. Later on, when we get into scripting, we'll talk more about buttons and what we can do with buttons and how to script the buttons and get them to work and do different things.